All right. Do you want me to get rid of these flowers? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, they're sure. fine. They're not in the way of the okay. or anything. They're kind of pretty. It adds yeah. contrast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll use it. We'll use it in the, in the interview. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, what was it about the, uh, the script and your character that sort of intrigued you? Oh, well, you know, I mean, this, um, this is my second time, luckily, luckily yeah. my second time getting to work with Steven. I okay. was on his previous series on NBC, Next Caller, that okay. eventually didn't make its way to the mm -hmm. air. But there's um, a, a, a very lovely balance of um, uh, comedy and heart that I feel like Steven always has underlying all of the characters and specifically the two characters that he's cast me as and whenever whenever I get a nice mix of both of those it just sucks me right in. Well your character is very interesting he's sort of in a lot of ways he's almost like the uh, the voice of reason and yet he's a former drug dealer and spot dealer and stuff like that. Uh, did you find that sort of an interesting sort of contradiction for the character? I did, I did. You know, I mean, I, you know, I, I grew up in Chicago, I've lived in Houston, back to Chicago for school, and now I live in Brooklyn. You know, I mean, I've, I've, I feel like I've, uh, I've been around a couple of um, really intelligent, really sensitive drug dealers in my life, so mm. it wasn't really uh, hard to kind of make that sort of connection. Not that I know them personally, they were just around where I was hanging, of just course. so that we're clear about that. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, someone who always, it, who elevates themselves in, 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 in one degree, I always think it's interesting when they're able to elevate themselves emotionally or intelligent, intelligently on another end. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, um, what was the oddest experience that you ever met someone in sort of had? The oddest experience I ever met? Oh, you know what? When Tinder came out, <laughs> um, like last summer, I I was here I was here in LA, mm -hmm. and I went to Mexico with a couple of friends, and they're on they were on this Tinder thing for so long, and so I I was like, man, I'm bored. I'm not talking to anybody. I'm not even talking to my buddies that I'm here in Mexico with. I'm gonna download the app and go on Tinder, and I did, and I went to San Diego to meet this girl, and when I got there, she looked nothing like she looked in her pictures, and the first question that she asked me was, do I look like I look in my pictures? And uh, I got in my car as quickly as I could and drove back uh, back to Mexico. <laughs> well, well, his character sort of sometimes can be a little off-putting, but your character, What's up with it? I mean, part of it's because you're living at his place, but sure. do you think there's a point that he could push you to that would be too far, or do you think that your character is just along for the ride and enjoying it? No, I think I I, 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 I think there's definitely uh, buttons that Jimmy could push on me that that, that might go mm -hmm. um, a little over the edge, um, but for, for 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 the most part, I think uh, Edgar understands. You know the complexities right. of everybody and uh, certain people's upbringings versus his own upbringings and and what life is kind of chosen for him and everybody else's and so he's able to carp, uh, compartmentalize you know Jimmy's assholishness right. you know and into that's just kind of the vibrato that he has as as a person and uh, as a friend he loves him for it because that's who he is and he loves him as a whole. Mm -hmm. Well, um, as a sort of a someone on the sidelines who is the worst um, well I'm definitely not the worst I'm the, <laughs> Edgar's the best, um, Edgar's the best. but I, you know I mean I would have to say um, uh, he thinks Gretchen is the best thing that's ever happened to Jimmy right. um, and uh, he's not quite sure what he thinks about Kether so I would have to say I, I, I think Jimmy's probably the worst okay and uh, I love them even more for it. Yeah. Well, you mm -hmm. know the old saying, it's always hard to uh, work with uh, animals and children. I, I love that little kid who's uh, in the first two episodes. What does he like to work with? Oh, I, I love Shane. Killian yeah. is my little homie, man. Yeah. It's so it, it it's so funny. The things, I think he's in Europe right now. Oh, One okay. day we were sitting out at lunch and I said something about how I've never, I've actually never been to Europe until this past November. I was in Germany for three days. And he was like, oh yeah, man, let me tell you about it. He was like 12 years old. He was like pulling out an itinerary. And uh, it's pretty amazing. And, and I, like, I like the sort of bond that Edgar and Killian have together because I think um, if I wasn't living in Jimmy's house every day, he would probably forget my name just as much as he forgets Killian's name. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think I think uh, I think we bond over that. And then later I actually get to to, to act with some animals too. Oh alright. So, so uh, something but, to look forward to. But night 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 neither have been difficult thus far. Okay, cool. By okay. any means. 
LA is such a big part of the show. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it fun to be able to sort of work in different uh, areas like this, with not just being a normal soundstage type of deal? Yeah, you know, I it it, it, uh, it keeps it fresh, and it's 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 also it, it's really great to actually be in environments and not sort of in a in a stale place, you mm -hmm. know, um, to to kind of create weather and how it interacts and like the the energy of LA is very different than our energy us four because uh, Kether I and myself we all live in Brooklyn right. and then Chris lives in far east Brooklyn in mm -hmm. Manchester so like you know you take sort of our sensibilities and our sort of energies and yeah. mix them with the kind of laid back and chill style of LA and I, I, I like how they complement and they contrast each other yeah well I was, yeah. was going to ask you about that I mean the three of you are all from the New York stage and everything is it sort of a uh, bit of a weird thing to suddenly be in LA and doing TV and stuff like that, or is it a different? No, it's like it's it's like being on a uh, mini New York stage kind yeah. of. Because when you know the, the the great thing about working on television together is you get that same sort of ensemble family mm -hmm. element that you get by working in a play. You know, uh, eight hour days, yeah. four weeks in a row, two weeks of tech, and then and then running the show. You get to really bond, and we get to do the same thing here. And um, they're the, they're the best, even yeah. though you know kind of the worst but they're the best <laughs> well you're the only one who has uh worked uh as a series regular on a uh, on an old network a uh, network uh, sitcom as well as this uh, why do you think that cable networks are sort of getting the most interesting uh shows now um, well i think it has to do a with their selectivity of the scripts and the writers that they work with they don't have to fill as many spots um as as the networks seem to have to during their pilot season, even though it varies now, pilot season seems to be all year long. So, I mean, you have that. They get to be a little bit more selective, and at the same time, you know, they don't have the same exact constraints that you do um, on network, where you kind of really have to keep it in that nucleus so the middle of America will get everything that you're trying to say. Right. You know, the cable networks kind of like to leave you hanging or make it uh, a little bit more thought-provoking. Which, you know, coming from a theater background, that's always what we're trying to do in, in our process of storytelling there. So I think that really mm -hmm. the folds in. So who is your fer favorite uh, Ferris Bueller character? Sloan. Sloan? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I was, I, I, I was when, when I was that age, and, and any girl who wore that hat right. like that, I was, I was in on it. That Debbie Gibson hat, that was right. my jam. Now, I, I'm not sure. I, when I was watching, I watched the second episode today. And I, I'm not 100% sure, and I don't think you even had any scenes with her, but the woman who was working at the bookstore, that looked like the woman from the Progressive oh, uh, Car Flo. Commercials. Yeah, Flo. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I was wondering, is yeah. that Flo, and was she trying to sell people insurance between takes? Oh, you know, she did. She actually <laughs> sold me Progressive Insurance in between takes. It was great. I switched over from Geico. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. You guys just weren't cutting it. Um, no, no, I, I, but it is, it is, it is indeed the flow. That is the flow, very yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, is it interesting, I mean, your character is not as wild as, the, obviously, Jimmy or, uh, or Aya's character, but is it interesting playing a character that's sort of willing to be inappropriate, even though your character has a lot more boundaries than others, but even yours will act out of somewhat? Yeah, I, you know, I think, um, I, I think any time, you know, we get to test the waters and kind of push the limits outside of the box as an actor it's very mm -hmm. exciting and uh, I, I think for the character specifically for Edgar since he's such an in the box sort of frame you yeah. know um, I mean when you're when, when you're doing two different tours you, you get used to everyone that your, your clothes are picked out your toothbrush is picked out your right. toothbrush your toothpaste you know the exact types two two pairs of shoes that you have the hair gel that you use it's all right there for you so to be able to kind of you know, navigate and sort of reach out. I think that's pretty exciting for him. Did you ever sort of figure out the backstory of how exactly Edgar ended up uh, living with Jimmy and sort of crashing at his place? Mm. And what do we take to uh, get him out of there if he ever wanted to? I I, I think you, you I, I think uh, that question would be um, better answered later on in this first season. Okay. Yeah, okay. I don't want to give too much away on that. Okay, well, thank <laughs> yeah. you so much for doing the interview. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Really a nice first two episodes. Oh, thank you.